All right. So apparently I can actually do the third one for the people of the Springs. Now this one is called Journey to the Mysterious Island. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Entering standby. Oh, did it unnavigate it? I think it unnavigated it. There we go. I hope nobody disturbs me. We don't carry any black swimming floaters here. Uh, but why? Black floaters look really cool. Hmm. Uh, may I ask whether you've had some bad luck lately? Uh, well, yeah, sorta. The last pair of black floaters I bought ended up getting bitten by Koholosaur. I nearly drowned. Which is why I want to buy some new ones. I knew it. I specifically asked an expert from the Masters of the Nightwind about this once. Black floaters bring bad luck. R really? Also, have you by any chance become a mosquito magnet? Or found yourself overheating? Maybe even suffering a little heat stroke? Yeah, that's exactly how I've been feeling. It's all starting to make sense now. In that case, I'd recommend either pink or blue swimming floaters. According to the experts, Bright colors can not only lift your mood, but also bring good luck. I'll even offer you a discount if you'd like. Just see it as a way of celebrating your luck taking a turn for the better. You'd really do that? Then I'll take one of each. You got it. <clears throat> well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler in Paimon. It's been a while, Mulani. Good to see you again. Was all that stuff you were saying just now really true? Do pink and blue floaters really bring good luck? Of course. I know a friend who nearly drowned once, but because she was wearing blue floaters, a group of Koholosaurs came to the rescue and brought her back to shore. Whoa, for real? But let's get back to why you're here. Are you looking to buy some water sports products? Come on, don't be strangers now. I can give you whatever you need. You are guests here, after all. It's only natural for me to give some gifts to you. No, no, we actually came here to ask you to be our guide. Well, you've come to the right person. So, where do you want to go? We want to visit the Mysterious Island from the legend. A trip to the Mysterious Island? Oh. Do you have any concerns, Mulani? I assume you're already aware of how difficult the trip will be, right? Yep, your chief has already made that pretty clear. But with our adventuring experience and with you as our guide, we'll definitely be able to reach the mysterious island. Then I'll have to explain some things to you first. I learned all my skills as a guide from Uncle New, and he's the best guide in the whole tribe. But apparently, even he has never successfully reached the island. With a good guide to lead the way, a journey should usually be fun and pleasant. However, Going to the mysterious island is different, and I don't know if I can guarantee that. But since it's you two asking, I definitely won't refuse. It's just my duty as a guide to explain these things before I officially agree to go on the journey. Paimon thought this would be a piece of cake for you, but it seems like we're actually asking a lot. Uh, Paimon will feel really guilty to make a friend go through a bunch of trouble just for the sake of finding some treasure. Yeah, that's not ideal. Uh, Mulani? Whoa, what's the hurry? Come on, what are you waiting for? Kolo just got back to the tribe. I heard he found another underground ruin full of treasure. Oh, Kolo's back. Wait for me. Who's Kolo? Oh, he's currently ranked as the number one guide in the people of the Springs. Besides the tribe's first chief, He's the only other guide who's ever made it to the mysterious island. Really? 
He's always out and about, so we don't get to see him often. Sounds like this is quite an occasion, though. Let's go check it out. Uh, let me put up the closed sign first. Okay, come with me. Journey to the Mysterious Island. Crystals you asked for can only be found in caverns deeper than 500 meters underground. Here, have a look for yourself. As for the people you asked me to take along, they almost all got lost in a cave. Out of my sense of duty as a guide, I brought them all back. Next time, just save the trouble and let me go alone. Indeed, well done. No wonder he's the best. I wouldn't dare to go more than 200 meters down into a cavern like that. I wonder how much he made this time. Whoa, he really does sound like a super amazing guide. Do you think you could get some pointers from him, Mulani? Who knows, maybe he could save us some trouble on our trip to the mysterious island. Ko'olo always treats his experience like trade secrets. He never tells anyone anything about being a guide. Oh, okay. But one day, I'll also be able to reach the island. That's him, right? Do you really think you'll be able to get his help? Allow me to do the talking. <clears throat> you must be the top guide of your tribe. I have a commission that I hope you'd be willing to consider. Hmm, that guy sure looks familiar. Oh, aren't those two the scholars from Sumeru who are bitten by the Koholosaurus? They also wanted to go to the mysterious island, right? Seems they finally realized that they need a guide. A commission? Since you've obviously heard about my abilities, have you also happened to hear about my rates? If you're not intimidated by the price, then we can talk. Yes, I've looked into everything I need to know. As long as the trip is a success, then the commission fees won't be a problem. Oh? And where is it you want to go? The mysterious island. Just as time on that. But first, please don't misunderstand. I'm no tourist. I wish to visit the real place. You hear that? He wants to go to the island. In that case, Ko'olo's the only one for the job. But the journey to the island requires a lot more than just a guide, right? Since you want to visit the real mysterious island, then I'm sure you've also heard about the requirement for our trip, right? Yes, I know. According to the legend, only those who are willing to entrust their lives to one another will be able to reach the island together. I must reach that island, even if that means putting my life in someone else's hands. I have made up my mind. Don't waste your words on me. The way I see it, the requirement is just a way to weed out those who do not have the skills to reach the island by themselves. Y you You say you'd put your life in somebody else's hands? <laughs> Ridiculous. Even if someone were to trust me with their life, they'd just be another burden. Let's look at it the other way around. Why would I place my life in the hands of someone whose abilities are far below mine? That is what the legend is really hinting at here. Many guides in the tribe have received commissions like this, only to end up bogged down by their incompetent clients long before reaching the destination. How do you think I reached the mysterious island? I made it because I chose to go alone. Well, um, I'm different. I'm no ordinary tourist. That doesn't make much of a difference to me. You'll give up halfway at best, which is a waste of my time. And a waste of your commission fees. I can tell you're just looking to explore something new. If that's the case, then you can find another guide in the tribe. For example... New student, over there. What's up with that guy's attitude? Paimon takes back everything nice she said about him. I have things to do now. Goodbye. Hold on, Ko'olo. What's wrong? I'm only introducing a potential client to you because I know you're a teacher. In fact, I'd say it's quite the opportunity. Never mind that for now. I don't agree with your views on the island. Uncle New taught me that... I know. You're just the same as him. You both obviously hope to prove yourselves, but still think that you have to follow the legend to the letter. Waiting for a 
cumbersome client to find you before even trying to set off. Mulani? The rare ores I brought back are proof that I've been to the island. But as for new, where's his proof? Why don't you wait until he's actually found the island before you start using his views to refute me? Ooh, I don't like this guy. I'm really sorry. I just wanted to take you to see what the excitement was all about. I wasn't planning on getting into an argument with him again. That Kolo seemed to harbor some kind of grudge against you, Mulani. Or maybe your teacher. I know. Quite an impressive achievement for my teacher, huh? Even the best guide in the tribe can't stop talking about him. Oh, Paima thought you'd be more upset. Of course not. Uncle Nu has also argued with Ko'olo before. I've already heard the same words several times now. But it's hard to prove anything to him unless you've actually been to the island. You also really hope to reach the island, right, Muolani? That's right. It's just that I've always seen the journey as something super important and not to be taken lightly. I was really surprised when you asked me to be your guide today. Uh, after telling you about all the dangers with such a serious face, I didn't make you think that you're causing me trouble, did I? Actually, Paimon did think about taking our invite back. No, please don't do that. Actually, that is also a part of what Uncle New taught me as a guide. The difficulty of the trip is the very first thing that needs to be clearly laid out to the group. <clears throat> if you want a chance of reaching the destination together, you must first reach a consensus on the amount of effort that will be required. I always felt that my teacher is no less skilled than Ko'olo. But Uncle Nu has never been to the island, so Ko'olo always uses that to push us down. So, as Uncle Nu's student, I've always wanted to complete the trip to prove his skills. It's a pity that I've never had the chance. But don't you have that chance now, Mulani? If you'd agree to be our guide, we're completely willing to trust you with our lives. With the help of the renowned traveler and his trusty companion, you'll definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Then you can come back and teach that Koalo a lesson. <laughs> oh, Paimon. Come on, bring it in. <laughs> Why are you making blush? <sighs> Alrighty then. If we're gonna go, we should start preparing right away. I've already had the plans for this trip written out for some time. Come with me. <clears throat> oh, it's that scholar guy. Paimon almost forgot he was still here. Scholar guy? My name is Varamdra. Please use it. I, I didn't expect to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, and it's that lady too. Hello again. Excuse me, Miss Guide. Since we've been referred to you, would it be okay for us to join your journey? I'm Mualani. Just call me by my name. As for whether or not you can come along, uh, I'm sure you've already heard the requirements. We've only just met, and I'm not sure you're cut out for this trip. The path to the mysterious island is a grueling one. Oh. I admit that after coming to Natlan, I've encountered many things outside of my field of expertise. It's understandable you're worried that we'll slow you down. So how about this? We'll set off with you as ordinary travel companions, and I'll pay you the usual commission fees. But we won't officially be your clients. In other words, you needn't shoulder the responsibility of being our guide. And even if something were to happen to us, your reputation as a guide won't be tarnished as a result. How does that sound? If you accompany us, then you are a member of the team. I could never agree to such a careless deal. <laughs> Oh, don't tell me you think I'm the same kind of person as Ko'olo. So you still refuse? <sighs> Fine. Kari, I'll put the more for the return trip in your backpack. Without a guide, the road ahead may be dangerous, so please don't follow me. Varandra? Now he wants to go alone? Why is this guy so obsessed with that island? Wait! <sighs> please don't do this in front of a guide. I can't let a tourist go on some dangerous journey all alone. Even my sweet mom would give me a harsh scolding if I ever let you do that. I'm so sorry for the trouble. Really. Don't say that. 
Although it'd be inappropriate to bring along two strangers I just met, there is another solution. How about this? Let's meet up tomorrow morning at the monument near the tribe's southeastern slope. I'll see you there. So you've decided to accept my offer? No. My plan is to use some of our time together to turn you from strangers into friends. The kind we can trust with our lives. That's your plan? <sighs> Very well, then. Wonderful. On behalf of both Varandra and I, thank you so much. Pretty sure only Mualani could come up with a plan like that. Yep, that's Mualani for you. We need to get started on our preparations. Come with me. I've got some business for you. We've been over this before. The name's Yellapath. I know. It's just that Laffa sounds so much cuter. Well, since you're the customer here, I guess whatever floats your boat. I need a camping tent with all the accessories. Only the best you've got. Another commission, huh? Just so you know, a full tent according to your standards is gonna be pricey. Is your client covering the bill? Uh, how much are we talking? Don't worry about the costs. I'll take care of it. Oh, but that's not right. We're the clients, after all. Ahem. Let's make this clear, Traveler and Paimon. We're not working together like this is a hired commission, are we? Oh, Split no. It. We're traveling as close friends who trust each other with anything. That's what I thought. Honestly, I can be a little picky when it comes to camping equipment. And I don't want my friends to be paying for me. But don't worry, it's not that expensive. We're ready, Laffa. Your total is 200,000 mora. Isn't that still a lot for you, Mualani? Just imagine us in the wilderness, okay? We can either sleep out in the open, tired and weary, or simply spend a week's worth of pocket money and completely solve that problem. I'd say that's a great deal. You call that a week's worth of pocket money? Are you rich, Mulani? That's not important. We still need to buy some equipment from another store. Come with me. How close? That's fairly close. <laughs> Didn't even need to climb up. <laughs> Afternoon, Uncle On. <laughs> you call me Uncle, but I'm old enough to be your grandfather, you know. <laughs> because you're still young, Uncle On. Hey, can you help me find something kind of rare? I can negotiate the price. What do you say? All right. What are you looking for? A record player. Specifically, the kind that's convenient to take camping. Oh, that model is pretty rare indeed. I thought it'd be nice to keep it as a prized collectible in the shop. <clears throat> Uncle On. <coughs> uh, just don't break it, okay? Uh, I'll even buy it back from you when you're done with it. Thanks, Uncle On. A record player? Does that mean we need to buy some records, too? Yep. And that's our next stop. Well, at least it's next door. Hey, Paka Paka! Paka Paka? Mualani? Have you finally decided to release a record of your own? You'd be the first I'd sign with if I ever did, but not today. I just want to buy a record. The one you've been keeping from customers and listening to in secret? Uh huh. Uh, that's a pretty rare record, you know? Besides, I haven't even finished listening to that one yet. I can think of a way to connect you with a friend from the Masters of the Nightwind to release a record. Whoa, then we could produce some really wild tunes. You've got a deal. Nice. That's the record also accounted for. What do we need it for anyway? 
Well, I asked a friend from the Masters of the Night Wind for some advice once, and apparently, playing this song at night is an effective way to keep travelers safe and sound. Is that really a thing? Well, if it doesn't cost much, that's a nice way to make the trip a little more pleasant. You know how it goes, Mulani. 20,000 Mora for this record. That's the best I can do. Deal. Looks like Mulani really is rich. That should be about everything we need to buy. Next is... Ooh, I'm getting kind of nervous. What's wrong, Mulani? Next, I need to find my teacher and get the map to the island. Besides the legend left by the first chief, there's also a map. Well, not just a regular map, it's more like a treasure map. It's full of strange symbols, almost like it's a part of a big puzzle. Guides must draw from their experience to decipher the map's meaning and understand the route. The chief made several copies of the map and distributed them to the first members of the tribe. The copies were to be passed down to future generations, so usually a teacher will pass their copy to their student. Which brings us to today. The day I officially ask Uncle Mu for his copy of the map. Whoa. Hearing that is also making Paimon feel a little nervous. Sounds like it must be a pretty serious moment. Yes, but the thought of having you two by my side somehow makes me feel a lot better. We won't let Uncle Nu down, right? That's right! Let's go and find him together! <laughs> Afternoon, Uncle New. I have a big surprise for you. A surprise? Then you must be here to finally pick up the map. <sighs> you saw right through me, as always. Did you forget that you had mentioned these two to me before? The ones who went to the Night Kingdom with you. In some sense, you could say that you've already trusted each other with your lives. It's just that my feelings are a little complicated now. Huh? Do you think that I'm still not ready yet, Uncle New? No, I believe you are the best guide in your generation. It's just that... I'm not ready yet. After all, the journey to the mysterious island is no easy feat for any guide of the people of the Springs. I'm still a little worried. Don't worry. With our help, Mualani will definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Yeah. This time, I'll definitely be able to prove that Ko'olo is no better than Uncle Nu. Don't misunderstand. Since you've made up your minds, I won't try to stop you. It's just... Please listen to your teacher's words once more, Mualani. Our mission as guides has never been to prove anything. There is only one thing we must do. Guide tourists safely to their destination. I understand, Uncle Nu. In that case, you may have the map. Also, take this with you. What is it? It's a talisman. Take good care of it. You must return it to me when you get back from the mysterious island. Was this made with spinel fruit? Hmm. But for some reason, this doesn't look like a regular spinel fruit to me. Right. Which is precisely why it's so effective. You really know me best, Uncle New. <sighs> All right. Traveler and Paimon, tomorrow we'll set off. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. Yay! Paimon can't wait for another adventure! Alright, so wait until 8. Accidentally cut Paimon off. This should still be the same quest, right? Yeah, Dream to Mysterious Island.
Traveler, Paimon, over here. You here, Mulani? Oh, and those strange scholars are here too. Good morning, you two. Morning. So when are we leaving? <laughs> Seems you're as excited as a child before the start of our journey. I just want to get down to business as soon as possible. You know this is no leisurely spring stroll, so I hope we can all act a little more professional. Don't worry, I'm a very professional guide. <clears throat> Our journey to the mysterious island has officially begun. Yay! First, do you all see the statue here? Uh-huh. Is it an important clue? Well, no, it's not a clue at all. He was the first chief of the people of the springs who came back from the mysterious island and set up this place. It's a monument. The first thing we need to do before we set off is to touch the statue and pray to our ancestors. This will make our journey to the mysterious island smoother. Is there any theoretical basis to support that claim? A theoretical basis? No, but my teacher taught me it's an essential step before heading to the mysterious island. <sighs> Very good. You didn't try to argue with me over something that you aren't knowledgeable about. That's very professional of you. Sure, but since this practice doesn't have an empirical basis, I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Come on, everyone. Greetings to my ancestors. As your descendant, I'm about to follow in your footsteps and witness your accomplishments. Allow me to depart under your gaze and return under your protective watch. Was that supposed to happen with a little glowy thing going across like that? It really feels like we're about to embark on a great adventure! Now, please get ready. We're going to look for the first clue. Speaking of which, where should we look for the clue? Hmm. At a place where many gather. Like a party! Oh, it'd be faster if I go to the waypoint and then go there. Let me see if I can get some wood from these trees. Yeah, I got some wood. Wow, there are a lot of Koholosaurs here! As expected, the first clue is related to the Koholosaurs. When people from outside the tribe get a copy of the map, most can deduce that the first clue is related to the Koholosaurs. But they often end up looking in the wrong direction. When the first chief created the map, he left a special mark for this part. It's a code that the tribe uses to indicate a herd of them. So it'll be impossible to gain any leads from just finding one or two stray Koholosaurs. You're a real pro at this, Mulani! But, according to the information I've been able to find, Koholosaurs don't like gathering as herds unless it's to compete for the hot springs. So, let me tell you a secret that only a guide from the people of the springs would know. It so happens that wild Koholosaurs periodically gather in the valley up ahead. It's almost like how our tribe gathers together for festivals. Still, as soon as the season changes, the herd quickly disperses again. Unless you're a guide who's always running across Natlan, it would be very rare to ever witness such a thing. This is a thing? I need to note this down right away and include an explanation as a part of my thesis. According to what I've deciphered from the map, a clue is hidden deep in that valley. But to get there, won't we have to get through the herd of Koholosaurs? Hmm, we'll have to think of a way to sneak past without startling them. They're gathering together with their friends, so I'm sure they don't want to be disturbed. 
You mean we're going to have to walk through the Colosaur herd? That feels a little... <clears throat> Given we've agreed to work together, everyone should do their part. However, Caria has been attacked by Koholosaurs before, so this isn't an ideal plan for her. But it shouldn't be a problem at all for me. Let's have Caria wait here, and I'll take over all the tasks that were supposed to be entrusted to her. <laughs> no worries. We don't need everyone to go. We actually need someone to stay and look after the luggage, so we'll leave that to you two. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Is that so? Then that works out perfectly. And now I understand how much you care for your assistant scholar. Follow me and stay close. Oh no, we've been spotted. Let's back off and try again. These Kaholosaurs sure seem on guard. We'll never get through. Kevin, you've already used the information provided by the map to deduce that the clue is in that valley. Why don't you simply chase them away? You're pretty strong, aren't you? First of all, the elders of the tribe have always warned us to never hurt the Kaholosaurs. Doing so will almost certainly bring bad luck. And secondly, you can't just show up and intrude on others' gatherings, much less make them leave. That's just terrible. But on what basis? Okay. So can we figure out another way to enter the valley? <sighs> there must be a way to enter the valley without startling them. It'd take a while for me to come up with a solution on my own, so I'd like to ask everyone to help come up with some ideas. Let Paimon think. Oh, is there a detour or another way around? According to the map, the clue is right in the middle of the Koholosaur herd. Even if we try to approach from the other side, we'll just run into the same problem. Hmm, this is tricky. Karya, I've noticed that you only talk when you're trying to help smooth things over between Varamdra and the others. I'm sure you must have some ideas of your own, so why don't you share them with us? Me? All right. When Varandra decided to look for leads on the Koholosaurs, I wanted to help, and so I also looked up some information about the creatures. I discovered something very interesting. We thought that the Koholosaurs relied on their hearing to track their prey, but they also possess a very keen sense of smell. But I'm not sure how useful that information is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That was actually very useful, Miss Karia. You can just call me Karia. In that case, please stay here and keep an eye on the luggage. Traveler, Paimon, come with me. I've got an idea. Stink bomb? Found it! What's this? The key to making our way through the herd. If the Koholosaurs have a keen sense of smell, then even if we try to sneak around and stay out of sight, they'll still notice us once we get close enough. But this plant can help us solve that problem, because its fragrance is very similar to the scent of a Koholosaur. We can apply the plant's extract to our bodies and trick their sense of smell. So, we're gonna rub plant juice on ourselves? Yep. Don't worry, it's also good for your skin. Oh, Paimon feels all wet and slimy. But this actually does smell like a Koholosaur. Maybe because they eat it so much. Perfect. Okay, let's try to make our way through again. I'm gonna collect... Dang it! I was gonna collect those Follow plants. Follow me and stay close. Be sure to stay out of sight. What's that sound? Careful! Oh, it's a baby. Oh, it's just a young Koholosaur. Don't worry, this little one doesn't pose any danger. How could 
could there be so many here? We can't get through! Oh, I have an idea. Wait here. Careful, don't startle them. We must be getting close. Look, a bunch are gathering around that rock. What are they doing? Hmm, maybe when things start to get boring, they gather together and talk about something fun? <laughs> Too bad I can't understand what they're saying. Uh, but Paima thought guides from the people of the springs could understand Koholosaurs. Sounds like someone has been trying to trick you. True, they were definitely trying to scam us. Uh, huh? Do you see that on the rock? It looks like some kind of drawing. I've heard that there is a type of moss that changes color when it reacts to the biological signals released by Koholosaurs. But to trigger that sort of reaction, you'd need a huge number of Koholosaurus. That must be the clue! Should we take a picture? Oh, the flash might disturb them. Let me try to copy it down. We'll only copy down the mossy drawing and quietly... So we passed the first yeah. stage of the journey now, right? I see. Had we chosen to drive the Koholosaurus off, then we never would have found this lead. Seems there was a logical basis for everything you said after all. Has he always been this way, Miss Cario? He's just obsessed with his research. That's all. At least this has shown that my judgment is correct. I've proven my trustworthiness. And so, there should be no need for us to argue next time. Yes, I understand. And I suppose that'll help us avoid wasting time. Mulalani really knows how to lead our group. She is a professional guide, after all. Next, we'll need to use the lead we found to uncover our next destination. Now, what does this pattern represent? Hard to tell. I'm uncertainly doesn't have any idea what it's trying to get at. Aha, I got it. Though the lines are kind of rough, I can still see that they represent the boundaries between the water and the land at Jade Skirt Knoll. We can use this to fill in the hole on the map and find our next destination. Really? You got all that just from some rough lines? Well, intuition is also a part of it. Maybe I've just seen too many maps as a guide, and now it's easier for me to pick up on patterns like that. All right, break time is over. Let's get ready to move. <laughs> Back to this waypoint. That looks like a fighting arena. Squeak. I heard a squeak. <laughs> Got some wood. completely sure yet. The map seems to indicate there's a mechanism here that crosses the water. But I still need to think about what these lines might be referring to. I knew it! My theory was correct! Sounds like he's got something to say again. If you have any suggestions, then please feel free to share. I believe the mechanism that the lines are indicating is a spirit way. Hmm, that is a possibility. But I don't remember anyone from the tribe setting up a spirit door around here. 
According to my theory, it might not have been set up by humans. The dragons living in that land also used a similar device, long before the humans. Speaking of which, the spirit doors your tribe uses may have been built imitating the dragon ones. Oh, I remember now. Uncle New did mention this possibility to me before. After learning about the legend, I realized that it was connected to my research. And so, I looked up a lot of related information. Even though I haven't found an exact route to the mysterious island, I'm fairly certain I've deduced the geographical features of the island's surrounding areas. Firstly, it's at an intersection between water and land. And secondly, there should be a high concentration of phlogiston. My research indicates that the Spirit Way was originally a natural phenomenon caused by the flow of phlogiston. Therefore, the area must contain many potential spirit ways, and the dragons who lived here in ancient times may have left behind some devices to control them. Oh, amazing. Now it all makes sense. Now everyone's contributing to the team. <clears throat> you flatter me. If my theory is correct, we should already be very close to the mysterious island. Once you've unlocked the mechanism, we'll be able to derive the island's location. All right. Then let's start searching for the Dragon's Spirit Door. That's just a quick and easy name. I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Given the dragons used the device long before the humans, we should stick with a name that references no human concepts. Calling it a phlogiston node would be much more appropriate. Uh, then let's start searching for the phlogiston node. Speaking of which, what does it look like exactly? If I'm not mistaken... Look that way! Whoa! It started glowing! This should be it, right? Looks like we can activate it once we get close enough. The light does remind me of a spirit way. But according to the map, there should be two more phlogiston nodes. Let's keep searching, everyone. Okay. I gotta go across the water. Aha! I'm not gonna start that. Just avoiding the little quest giver. Why is everyone trying to join my world while I'm recording? I can use Zhongli, I feel like it. Paimon sees it! Oh, but it's way up high. We'll need to find a way up there. And there we go. <sighs> we finally found all of them. Great work, everyone. Okay, now first, we need to figure out how to control this thing. Its qualities are very similar to that of a man-made device, but it doesn't seem as intuitive to me. Is there something wrong? See, look at this. After activating a normal spirit door, we could just go ahead and use it. But this one requires someone to stay and keep operating it here. Also, according to the map, we need to activate the mechanism and switch between different phlogiston nodes to change the path of the spirit way. If we don't operate the nodes properly, 
then the people on the spirit way will come tumbling from the sky. Isn't that super dangerous? In theory, the process should be very safe, but only if the three phlogiston nodes are each being operated by someone. Do you think you'd be able to operate it? I just tried, and it clearly requires more skill than a typical spirit door. Though I've never tried before, I've read a lot of information and theoretically should be able to properly control it. Let me give it a try. Huh? But in theory, this shouldn't happen. If Barandra can't control it, then that also wills out me. Okay, well, how about you? After all the adventures he's been on, handling something like this should be easy-peasy! Alright, then it'll be up to the Traveler to stay here and operate the Phlogiston node. I'll go activate the mechanism. I'll let you know when we need to switch nodes. Just make sure you quickly head to the corresponding node, and we should make it safely. Wait, but handling it this way sounds even more dangerous, Mulani! Don't worry. It looks like the spirit ways are all above the water. I'm pretty good at swimming, so I'm not afraid if I end up falling in. But it's so high! And you'll be falling so fast! If we don't manage to reach a node in time, or if we make a mistake, there's a lot that can happen! Do you still remember the promise we made before we left, Paimon? Only those who can trust each other with their lives can reach the mysterious island. Since you two are willing to trust me, then naturally, I'm willing to trust you. Alrighty. Just leave it to us. Please be careful. Okay, so I go as Mulani. When doing a spirit way challenge, you can jump to switch to adjacent tracks. When close to another track, jump while holding down the directional movement control to switch tracks. How do I get on? Oh, that's how I get on. That was perfect. You were amazing, Mulani! For a couple of moments, Paimon thought it was over. <laughs> I'm confident I could do it all over again. Wait, why are the phlogiston nodes no longer lit? Oh no, you're right! It appears the phlogiston nodes here need to automatically recharge. Once they're activated, they'll be unusable for some time. In that case... No matter what happens next, we have to seize our chance. Otherwise, who knows how long we'll have to wait for another shot. 
Do you hear that? The weather's getting gloomy, and a bunch of whirlpools just appeared in the water. Oh, snap. Yes, we need to get to higher ground and take a look. Look over there! Whoa! There's a giant whirlpool over there! Yep. And that's our next stop. Huh? What do you mean? The info I deciphered from the map points to only one possibility. To reach the mysterious island, we must enter that massive whirlpool. No way. Forgive me for being frank, but as a guide of the people of the Springs, I'm sure you understand the danger of such a vortex even better than we do. Yes, I know. But whether it's the information deciphered from the map, or the direction of the spirit wave that I observed in the air, everything points to the path ahead being hidden in that whirlpool. And what if you're wrong? Parandra. I... Uh... I'm not trying to be unreasonable. Unfortunately, I'm very knowledgeable in this area. The spirit ways must have affected the nearby bodies of water and lowered the water level. That's why the whirlpools appeared. At this rate, some of the land that was once underwater will soon reappear at the surface and see the light of day again. Don't you think that sounds more like the definition of a mysterious island? So, our goal should be the shallow waters. If we enter that vortex, the undercurrents will drag us to the bottomless abyss. Uh, he does seem to have a point. I can't find any evidence to refute your claim for the moment, but I still trust my judgment. Then it seems like it's time for our collaboration to come to an end. But didn't we all agree to trust each other? I have reached this conclusion based on my field of expertise, and I cannot deny it. Even if you try to convince me otherwise. From now on, let us each choose our own way. No, I refuse. You! Letting your clients separate themselves from the group in the middle of a journey will result in the worst luck possible. I will not agree to that. Then we can implement the plan I proposed at the very beginning. You're not my guide, and as such, you don't have to take responsibility for me. Oh, but you can't do that once you've traveled together as a group. If you were to leave now, we'll all be hit with bad luck. It's now beyond both our control. How about this? You and Karia wait here. We'll go first and investigate the whirlpool. I know you like to explain everything with theories and logic, so let me build my case first, and then I'll come back to convince you. Well, um... Traveler, Paimon, let's get going. A massive whirlpool is up ahead. Just the thought of going in there is making Paimon dizzy. Do you also think that this is a reckless decision? Um, well... It's okay. That's completely normal. Actually, I completely understand how Varamdra feels. This is just how it is to be a guide. The tribe's experiences passed down from generation to generation are what give us the ability to guide our guests through hardships. This gives us the power to decide which way we should go. But it also means that we must bear the consequences of our mistakes in judgment. Which could be quite dire this time. Although I'm pretty convinced that all the leads we have collected are pointing us to the whirlpool, I still don't know what awaits us inside. If the scholars still choose to reject my plan, I won't have the confidence to ask them to only do as I say. The same goes for the two of you. You are the commissioners, so if you think this is too risky, then it's perfectly reasonable if you want to end the trip here. The good news is that I know the way back to the tribe very well. Mulani? We've already made a promise to each other. We'll reach the island together. Traveler. That's right. You trusted us before, Mulani. Now it's our turn to trust you. Besides, it's gonna take more than a whirlpool to scare the two of us. 
We all managed to make it back from the Night Kingdom. After an experience like that, what's so scary about being sucked into a whirlpool? Aw, Paimon. <laughs> Come on, bring it in again. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's investigate this whirlpool and see if we can gather any info to convince that scholar. Matters of luck aside, he definitely knows a lot about geography and we'll need him on the team. I know, it's just that we can't see much from here. I'll get closer to the water and have another look. Wait a sec, is it just Paimon or does the whirlpool seem to be getting smaller? You're right. Maybe it's just like the phlogiston nodes and can only be active for a certain amount of time. That means we need to hurry. Riff Guide, we have a problem. Karia, what are you doing here? I tried to persuade him, but Varandra insisted on verifying his theory first. He said that the water to the south was about to be shallow enough to wade through. But after he took a few steps, the water suddenly began to surge and he was swept away. I'm not much of a swimmer, so I came to call for help. Oh, why did this have to happen now? Can we still make it into the whirlpool? No time to hesitate. I'll get in the water and rescue him. Just tell me which way he went, Karia. Which way? away by the current. Not here either. The current is too fast. We found him. came and found us just in time. Oh, there they are! Ramdra, thank goodness you're all right. Thank you so much, Miss Guide. Oh, didn't I tell you to wait for me? <coughs> Judging by the changes in the water's surface, the path to the mysterious island wouldn't be around for long. I, I didn't want to miss this opportunity. It's just... I... Uh, I didn't expect my calculations to be wrong. It seems you were right. Right? Who knows if we can make it back in time now? Huh? Well, the whirlpools have disappeared! Seems we missed our chance. Why would you give up on such an opportunity to come rescue me? How can you say that? It's already bad enough that you had to be left behind. Do you think I'd let anyone in my group drown? Oh. <sighs> I'm really sorry. Don't feel guilty, Karia. I think if I reactivate the nodes, that will cause the whirlpools to reappear. The only problem is that we still don't know exactly when we'll be able to do that. It's already getting late now. And we've been on the move for a whole day. As your guide, I suggest we make camp first and have a good meal. We can talk about the other stuff tomorrow. Now that you mention it, Paimon is feeling a little hungry. It's a miracle she hasn't mentioned food for so long. Hey, Paimon's stomach can be very sensible. It won't interrupt while everyone's busy solving puzzles. We have plenty of tasty things to eat. Let's just find a suitable spot to make camp. Hmm, I like that place right over there. Is this the spot? Let Paimon and the Traveler help set up the tent. Go ahead. I'll take care of the fire. Oh, and here's a little camping tip. It's best to set the tent upwind from the campfire. Okay, so I'm going to end the quest at this juncture right here, just because it's taking a while. So that's going to be it for now, and I'll see you guys later.